the seven last plagues of the book of Revelation. Obviously, the idea of the plagues comes from the book of Exodus, that the Israelites came out of Egypt. But there are ten plagues then. In the Revelation, we have seven plagues. Number seven comes before Exodus. It comes from Genesis. The first time it's mentioned, obviously, is the beginning of the Bible, the seven days of creation. This is number seven. And if you followed all the presentation in this series, you remember that there is a structure or skeleton in the book of Revelation that's built around the seven day creation. It's throughout the book. And if you remember, the creation goes into stages, goes through creations of heavens, waters, and the earth. And then heavens are filled with heavenly bodies and waters or seas are filled with fish and sea creatures and then the earth is filled with beasts and and humans and so forth. So heavens, waters, earth, heavens, waters, earth, that is the creation pattern. Now, when you come to the book of Revelation, there is a, an interesting thing happening with this pattern. It's actually reversed or it's reversing gradually and dynamically. When you look at the seven trumpets, sounding in the book of Revelation. Uh, they don't follow the pattern heavens, waters, earth, heavens, waters, earth. They actually go in the reversed order. They go earth, waters, heavens, earth, waters, heavens. So something is being reversed. So I can see, if you look at the text in red, the first angel uh, did something and a third of the earth was burned up. So earth first, the second angel, a third of the sea turned into blood. Earth, then sea, the third angel, uh, a third, third of the rivers and springs of water turned. And then the fourth angel sounded his trumpet and a third of the sun and the moon and the stars were struck. So first earth, things on earth, the things on sea and waters, and then the heavenly bodies. So you have earth, waters, and heavens. It's reversed the order of creation from Genesis. And if you continue to read the following trumpets again, the fifth angel sounded his trumpet again. It's coming up, something's happening on the earth. Locusts came down on the earth. Laid, ate the grass of the earth and plants and trees. Then the sixth angel came and something's happening with the waters. This time it's specifically a river Euphrates, symbolically mentioned, but it is the waters. The seventh angel sounded and there's something in heaven happening. Uh, loud voices in heaven, God's temple in heaven was open. Okay, so again we have earth, then waters, then the heavens in, in trumpets. Yeah, so creation goes heavens, waters, earth, heavens, waters, earth. The trumpets go earth, waters, heaven, earth, waters, heaven, go in, in the reverse order. Then if you look at the final plagues, the seven last plagues, you find the same thing taking place. The first angel went out, this is Revelation 16, and poured out his bowl on the land or the earth. The second angel poured it out on the sea or the waters. The third, third angel uh, poured it out on the rivers, springs of water, so that's still waters. And then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun. So there is a gradual movement from the land or the earth to the waters or the seas, then to the heavens or the sun or the heavenly bodies. And then you continue to read this. Again, the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, which is on earth, not in heaven, it's on earth. The sixth angel, again, poured out his bowl on the river of Euphrates and its water. So you have waters again. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air or the sky or the heavens. So you can see that again, unlike the creation order, which goes like this, heavens, waters, earth, heavens, waters, earth, this is reversed, earth, waters, heaven, earth, waters, heaven. Now, why is this significant or important? Basically, the seven last plagues are the reversal of God's creation. God's created order turns back into disorder and chaos. So if you look at this summary of this page, it's much clearer. The six days of creation. First, the light is mentioned, which is in heavens. Then the waters are mentioned. 
third day, earth is mentioned. The fourth day, sun, moon, and stars, which are the heavens. Waters are populated with fish. Earth is filled with beasts and humans. So heaven, waters, earth, heaven, waters, earth. And the plagues. They, they start with, with number six, they're the earth, and then go back to one. So earth, waters, heaven. Earth, waters, heaven. Basically, what God did in the beginning through the word and the spirit is that the creation of life took place on planet. Now he allows this to reverse itself back into chaos before the end of the story where God creates or recreates the planet anew and restores the Garden of Eden conditions where there is no death, nor sin, nor suffering, nor evil. Okay? So, what happens? What is happening here? Really, God is letting go of things. God is not causing these things. That's the thing. He is the creator. He is, he's made all these things. He holds all these things. And when he pulls back, because with his power he holds everything, everything sort of starts to disintegrate. So God lets go of things. Now, this is not a deistic, deistic Jeffersonian God, you know, Thomas Jefferson. Uh, in his Jefferson Bible, he removed all supernatural elements from the Bible. So this God of deism, or God of the American Declaration of Independence, where God is called the Supreme Being. Now, this God is more like the God of Aristotle, uh, the Greek philosopher. It is God who is very, very, very distant, far, far away. He's not involved in the earthly affairs at all. He is God who created and left us merely with the natural laws and, and, and left us to our own devices. Biblical God is not only the creator, but he is also the sustainer and the upholder. We are continually alive day by day because of the active presence of God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And Paul told, told Athenians, through him we live and move and have our being. Every breath we take is because of the immediate closeness and nearness and presence of God who gives us life. God's Spirit renews life moment by moment. And if he withdraws with us, we are in big trouble. Now, the Spirit has no work to do on the Sun or, or the Moon or Mars or Jupiter or Neptune. There's no life there. This planet is bursting with life, which is a manifestation of the presence of God's Spirit. So at the end of the book of Revelation, which is also the end of the biblical narrative, the biblical storyline, the biblical drama, the spirit begins gradually to withdraw and to let go. And here we have the reversal of creation, the seven-day creation, as things turn chaotic on this earth because God withdraws his hand that holds back the winds of strife and chaos. Just like God pulled back his protection from Job, if you are familiar with the book of Job, and then the chaos ensued. And this will all take place before God recreates the planet Earth and restores it back into the original image and the Garden of Eden conditions where there will be no sin or evil, there will be no suffering, and there will be no death. But more about that in the coming presentations.